Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'll be honest, this video, before you watch it and get too invested in it, it's kind of just a filler video and a teaser video for something, but I do think that there's some value in sharing with you stuff that I've learned over owning a million cameras. And it's, um, you know, through shooting, they say like taking a lot of photos and, and, and exploring with photography, you eventually learn a lot about yourself, what kind of subjects you like to shoot, what focal length is best for you, um, maybe what type of cameras and stuff. And, and for me, I've, I've noticed, I've noticed something and I, I think this is important for you guys. Cause I, I hate harp on like the micro four thirds and size and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not addicted to micro four thirds itself as a format, but more so what it offers. And it's not the only system that offers it. In fact, I'm recording this on a Fujifilm right now, which you'll see in a second, but I keep going back to this one setup and it's this lens in particular because it kind of offers both things that I really, really like. It's, uh, it is this lens right here. It is the Fuji 27 millimeter f 2.8. So it's a 40 mil equivalent. Uh, now this lens in itself is not anything special in particular because it's got a noisy autofocusing motor, but what it does do really well is first it's weather sealed. It has an aperture ring, which I really like that whole feel and aesthetic, but more importantly, it's small and compact and it's a pancake lens. And I noticed myself, I gravitate towards these type of styles of cameras. It, it's in my mind what, a camera should feel like. I don't like the big honking lenses on the front of it. Um, you know, if you're a micro four third shooter, this is something like the 20 millimeter uh, F 1.7 Panasonic Lumic lens. I think the 14 millimeter F 2.5. And then there's smaller primes too that fit into this. I think that's the beauty of micro four thirds is you have a lot of like those different focal lengths that fit in that small kind of pancake-ish aesthetic. Um, but I keep going back to this Fuji 27 millimeter F 2.8 lens because it's really sharp and I love the way it makes, in this case, a Fuji X-T5 feel. But I've started looking down my line of other cameras that I have, which by the way, I've gotten rid of all of them except for this X-T5 now. I know, we'll talk about it later. But I noticed like my film cameras have the same kind of aesthetic and setup. This is my Canon AE-1 and this is the 28 millimeter F2.8 FD lens on it. Um, but the 50 millimeter is actually the same or even a little bit smaller. Now this is a little bit bigger than a pancake. I know what you're thinking. That's not a pancake, but like this, this is a very well balanced feeling camera to me. I'm looking at myself in the monitor up here. Okay. There's one example. The other example is this Nikon FE2, which I shoot more often and even has a smaller lens. This is the 50 millimeter 1.8. Uh, I think it's called the E series lens. And I just, I love this feel. I, I have no desire to sell these cameras at all because, well, one, I wouldn't get much value for them, but two, I like using them. I like the form factor of them. Even the DSLRs that I, I've, you know, held on to, this is given to me, this is the Nikon D70. This has the 50 millimeter 1.8 D lens on it. And I was shooting a Nikon D780 for a week and I kept this lens on it as well. So I like this. To complement this 50 millimeter 1.8, I have the 28 millimeter F 2.8. Again, not a true pancake in respect, but it's certainly not a big lens. It kind of keeps that stubby, I call it stubby life. This is all about stubby life. And it keeps that stubby kind of aesthetic to it. I'll even say I did keep this one lens from Micro Four Thirds so far. It was given me free, and so it's not really worth it in the cell, but I actually kind of like it. It is manual focus, and it is this TT Artisan's 23 millimeter F 1.4 lens. Now this has APS-C on, uh, on the lens cap, you might have noticed that, but it's not, this is actually a um, Micro Four Thirds mount lens. And so I, it, it's the whole stubby life thing. It's a heavy lens, it's actually really sharp. It's got its usual TT Artisans type of impact where, or effects where the coatings aren't great and see a lot of like flaring and ghosting and, and purple fringing. But I like the way it feels on the camera. And so like when I have other lenses, that go that go on my cameras. Uh, in this case, the Fuji like 33 millimeter f 1.4 here. Awesome lens, but I'm less inclined to bring this lens because it's a little bit bigger. Now it's not huge, and so I, I'm not really complaining. But I like carrying the XT5 with the 27 millimeter f 2.8. Uh, same thing here. In this case, this is a macro lens for that Nikon D70 that was given to me. Big lens. I'd never walk around with this thing. Kind of crazy. Uh, even now, I'm recording you on the Sigma 18 to 50 f 2.8. I think candidly, this is the best zoom bang for the buck lens for APS-C cameras. It's incredible that like you get a, a 28 or 27 mil to 75 equivalent uh, f 2.8 lens. It's super sharp. 
I think it's weather sealed and it's not huge, but still it's not the same as the pancake life that is this Fuji right here. This Fuji lens is incredible. And I would say if you're gonna pair this with any other lens, the 18 F2 would be a good complement to this because it's so small and stubby. Let's say you're a Nikon shooter. I think this is like the 40 F2 that I like so much, the 28 F2.8 or even the 26 2.8. Those are three lenses I would for sure grab if you're in the Nikon Z system. If you're in the Sony system, like the Zeiss 35 millimeter F2.8, I think that gives that same type of vibe. And if you're a Canon shooter on the new RF glass, I think there's a 28 and definitely the 51.8. Yeah, they're cheap lenses and the glass isn't necessarily the best offerings from their, their, their manufacturers. But I would argue that these lenses probably offer the compactness and, and sharpness and enough detail and capability for you that would probably let you enjoy your camera a lot more. So I say embrace stubby life. Enjoy your setup a bit more. Carrying a camera around as it is is already a little bit of a burden on top of your cell phone. So if you're gonna do it, don't make it so burdensome. I, the other day I made a short about me walking around with my camera. I had the 33 1.4 on it and the whole time I kept thinking to myself, you know what? Should have brought the 18 to 50 Sigma zoom lens because that would be more versatile or I should have just put the 27 to 8 on there because that would be lighter and just more compact. I mean, I can actually put this X-T5 with the 27 on it into a jacket pocket in the wintertime and bring that with me. And of course, if you put that on a smaller body like an X-E4 or something like an X-T30, X-T50, I guess now, that would fit in your pocket as well a lot better. And so uh, one of the benefits, like I mentioned, of shooting and tying, trying all this gear out is you do eventually learn what's important and what you kind of gravitate towards. And for me, it's around that 40 millimeter focal length in the pancake type of lens. It could be a 50, it could be a 28, all that kind of stuff. And I'm telling you all this because I went on a limb and I bought something that will be here tomorrow that is probably my wildest gear purchase yet. And I might regret it but I decided I had, I had to scratch the itch. So I'll leave you on that cliffhanger and I'll see you guys um, in the next video. Thanks.